So I took the exam on April 3rd, which was, you know, only a few days ago. So this is what I saw. And I'll go ahead and write this here on the whiteboard as well. And I'm going to try to do this in a way that's not breaking any of Cisco's um, you know, non-disclosure agreements or anything. Keith's experience with the CCNA composite exam. So what did I see when I took it? So number one, uh, I was given 64 questions. So there were 64 questions on my particular test. And uh, I was given 90 minutes. So that's the standard time frame, 90 minutes. That's how much I had to do 64 questions. Um, only received one simulation question. But like I've said, in the past, I've had as many as four, but I had one simulation question. And only one testlet question. And that question was on the topic of EIGRP. I'm not going to tell you what they asked me as far as EIGRP, but was based on EIGRP. And when you finish with the exam, so as you're taking the exam, you cannot go backwards. In other words, if I'm on question number eight, and all of a sudden something about question number eight sparks something in my memory, ah, now I remember what the correct answer was for question number two. You can't go back to question number two. Once you click next on a question or continue, that's it. You go on to the next question and you can't go backwards. So that's very important to remember. So don't speed through the question, slow yourself down, and make sure you take time to read through it. You're going to want to, my tendency was to try to skim the question real quickly, and I had to force myself to slow down and read through the whole question. And that's very important because just a single word in the question can make the difference between one answer versus another answer being right. Now, when you're done, how is your score conveyed? So number one, when I took it, um, you needed, I should say I needed, at least 810 to pass out of a score of 1,000. So perfect score was 1,000, and it required that I had at least 810 to pass. So that's what I saw. And when you're finished with the exam, remember, I took the composite exam. It told me the percentage that I got correct in each of the seven or eight categories. So for example, it broke it down. It said network fundamentals. This is what you got correct. Land switching technologies, routing technologies, WAN technologies, infrastructure services, infrastructure security, and infrastructure management. So those technologies, I think you can find those right here. If I go back to, let's see here. Certifications. Uh, associate, CCNA routing and switching, and right here. So I took the 200-125, and yeah, so when I got finished, it gave me the, these seven different categories and said, you got 90% here, you got 60% here. You don't really know which topics you missed, um, but it does break it down per these seven right here. What do I think about Juniper as an alternative? I can't really speak to that. Can anybody else here speak to that? I, I don't have any Juniper experience. I don't know how prevalent they are in the industry. Can anybody else speak to Christoph's question here about uh, taking a Juniper certification as opposed to a Cisco certification? Yeah, as far as timings, I would say on a simulation, let's see, you've got 90 minutes total. I would advise that on a simulation, you don't want to spend any more than an absolute maximum of about three and a half minutes. 
If you look at your watch and you've spent about three and a half minutes on a simulation, it's time to move on at that point. Just answer what you can answer, you know, just randomly select something just to answer. Don't leave it without answering something, uh, but three and a half minutes is about the most you'd want to take on that. For the testlet and simlet questions, no more than about uh, two minutes for those. That's what I'd recommend for that. Yeah, that would be nice uh, if they gave you an extra 30 minutes. I have not heard of that. I have not heard that they give you extra time because you're not English speaker. Um, they might in other countries, but I personally have not heard of them doing that. And another question, what are the preparations one should take in the exam room in order to not waste time? Are you allowed with paper or something? Very good question. So. When you go into the testing center, my experience was that they had me give up my keys, my wallet, my cell phone, even my watch, which clearly doesn't have anything on it. I had to take all of that off and put it into a locked, um, they had a drawer where they unlocked it, I put it into a little bin in the drawer and then they closed it and they locked it. So I wasn't allowed to take anything, no calculators, no cell phones, nothing into the testing room. And then when you go into the testing room, all you have there is your computer. And then right next to it, you have about a, a 9 inch by 11 inch, about a 9 by 11 sheet of laminated paper and a dry erase marker and an eraser and a set of earplugs. And that's it. Um, so what usually people are, what I usually recommend people to do is when you go in there, after the testing administrator has left, before you start the test, take a few minutes and on that laminate piece of paper, do like a brain dump of like, you know, for example, if you were sitting in your car just before that you went in there and you said, okay, I've got my flashcards here. I'm memorizing for the last time my TCP and UDP port numbers. Memorize my TCP and UDP port numbers. As soon as you sit down there, write out those TCP and UDP port numbers on that laminated flashcard. Write out the things that you don't really feel 100% confident that you've got memorized, like your OSI layers, like uh, a subnetting cheat sheet or a subnetting formula or something like that, like your EIGRP and OSPF hold times and hello intervals. All those nitty-gritty li nitty little facts, write those down real quickly and so you have those and then you can start your test. Um, that's usually what people are recommended to do with that laminated flashcard before you actually start the timer. As far as proportions of the questions I got on network programmability, I believe I got, I only got one. I only got one question related to SDN and that was it. Is the CCNA a good base for continuing with the CEH? Is that the Certified Ethical Hacker? Um, I can't speak to that because I'm, I'm not in the world of security so I'm not sure what's I'm not going to tell you my score. <laughs> I'll tell you I passed it. I will tell you that, uh, but I'm not going to tell you what my score was. I felt comfortable with it. What is a testlet? A testlet was this one. Let's see here. Uh, let's see, where was, how do we get to it from here? All right, let's go back to it the way I did before. Cisco CCNA. Right here, 125. Okay, review type of exam questions. So a testlet is right here. This is a testlet. We're up at the top. It shows you like some command output or something like that. And then you have four questions you need to answer based on the output that you see up here. So you select your answers for question number one, then you go over here and you press number two to go to question number two, and then you've got to answer that one. So that's a testlet. Is there any chance to have questions which are related to topics that are not in the blueprint? I have heard that that is possible. Um, I didn't get any questions like that. All the questions that I saw were questions that were in the blueprint. 
but I have heard that sometimes they will throw in questions there that are not part of the blueprint. I think that is absolutely crummy that they do that, um, but I have heard that that is a possibility. If by any chance the simlet or testlet blocks what to do. Um, I assume, now correct me if I'm wrong here, but I assume that you're asking what happens if the testlet or the simlet like crashes or freezes? I have never had that happen. Um, and I've taken the CCNA probably in my lifetime like a dozen times and I've never had a situation where the testlet or the simulation freezes. If something like that did happen, I would contact the test administrator. I, you know, the person who signed me in. Um, something like that did happen once when I was taking, I think it was when I was taking the CCNP T-shoot exam. Uh, something froze and I had to contact them and they basically screamed and cursed and kicked the PC and somehow they got it working. Uh, but that's on them. If there's a technical difficulty with the test like that, that is on the testing administrator to figure it out or to restart the test or something. Uh, but you would have to let them know that you have a problem. After you've taken the exam, and this is what I've always done, once you've taken the exam, if you don't pass it, go back to your car and before you turn on the key, whip out your smartphone, whip out your tablet if you've got one and press the record button and just start doing a brain dump. Just sit back and close your eyes and say, okay, there was a question there on frame relay Delsius. I wasn't sure what it was. Uh, there was a question there on OSPF V3 addresses and what it uses. I'm not sure what that one is. There was a question and, and just record yourself saying that while it's still fresh in your mind, while you're sitting there in the parking lot of the testing center. And then when you go back home, play the recording back to yourself, type it out, and now you've got a study blueprint that you can go by on questions that you didn't do so well on. Thank you everyone so much, and feel free to shoot me a question or something if you have one in the future, or I monitor the IEOC for questions on there as well, and I wish you luck in your CCNA pursuits. Have a good rest of your week.